we welcome you once more as we are studying the end of the age and um, and that you will notice in the last three sessions that I've been recapping, uh, not everything I taught you, but some important things. And my desire here is, and I believe the Holy Spirit's desire as well, is that you must, that you'll be able to grab something. You understand? That maybe you didn't pick up the last time when we were talking about it, but this time you'll pick up something. You see, this is, this is how it is. As I said earlier on, what God calls you on a mission doesn't tell you everything. But whilst you are on that mission and moving forward with him, there are some things that he will tell you. And those things you have to accept. If you reject them, you can't go further from them. You understand? You've got to accept it and say, yes, Lord, I accept it. I receive this. I know this is what you're saying. This is what you're doing. And then what, what's happening now? You are involving yourself in that mission, on that goal. You're involving, you're getting involved in it. You're working, in other words, you're not working against what the Holy Spirit is saying and doing. You're working with Him. So that's the whole reason now to recap some of the things to you that we've already uh, discussed. And I'm actually trying to dig into those things, uh, you know, and to, and, and to bring some things out so that your faith can get stronger. Especially in this message for this time in these last days especially for this time, that you will get stronger and uh, uh, your faith will get stronger uh, to a point where that it would benefit you and benefit people around you. You must understand that you would be a, a kind of a, of a visionary because you, are, you, you believe in what Jesus promised he's going to do. You believe the church is going to be raptured. You believe that you're a faithful child of God and uh, you, you'll be ready when he comes to rapture the church and take the church. You'll be ready. You, that, you, you, you are a visionary. That means you have a vision, not just for today or tomorrow, but you have a vision up until Jesus comes to take you. So you're functioning on that level. Are you listening? Now, the one thing God does not want of us as children of God is to live in ignorance. But I must tell you this, the majority of the children of God on earth right now in the body of Christ are living in ignorance. They are being fed things that they shouldn't even be fed. They are being taught things at this season, in this hour, that shouldn't even come on the table. You understand? They shouldn't even be fed that because some messages right now, some messages are outdated. Are you listening? Some messages are outdated. Really, because we're living in a different time, in a different season, and this is what the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, has spoken about. But my prayer is that children of God, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, will actually, you know, try and develop an appetite for this. The reason why someone would not eat what you, what you uh, provide for them is because they have no appetite for it. Are you listening? Now, when a person is so used to eating junk food and then you give them a solid meal and when they sit down to eat the meal, they probably will complain that it's not tasting right and, uh, you know, it's not so nice because their tongue is so, so trained, you know, in eating junk food. And junk food has got a lot of bad things to it. Nobody can eat junk food for too long and not become obese, like an obesity, <laughs> you know like a whole city on its own. So it's dangerous eating junk food. There's a lot of side effects, there are a lot of negative things to it. So you've got to eat solid food. So that is what we are dishing out. But see whether the people are interested or not. They're not interested. But if you give them something fancy, you know, something religious or something fancy or something that would appeal to them, they will eat that. But that is not going to help them in these last days. All right, so we're going to move on and highlight a few things, and we're going to go to the book of Genesis now, chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Now we're going to look at some signs that have been already out there and some signs that are still to come. And Jesus said we must look out for these signs. You understand? He says we've got to look out for these signs. And if these signs are out there, 
then we've got to look out for them because these are the signs of what's happening and what is about to take place on earth. All right? So listen to what he's saying. All right? And he's talking about uh, the, the Genesis 1, verse 14. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. All right, verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it was so. Now, in this particular portion of scripture, it's talking about the sun and the moon. You understand? And the stars in the sky. So what is it saying? Let's go back to verse 14. I want you to pick one word up there. Verse 14. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. You see the sun and the moon and the stars, right? And let them be for what? For signs and seasons and for days and years. But the, first, the word I want you to highlight here is the word signs. So God created the sun and the moon and the stars. Okay, they have a dual purpose. And one of it is to give light during the day. And the moon will give light during the night. And the stars will give light during the night. Okay. But the other purpose of, those, of the sun, the moon and the stars is to give signs. Let that register on your mind now. All right. Because there are signs. All right. There are signs. Now when you go back and you uh, try to get an understanding about the signs, we will see that some things have happened already. And as we're going, we're going to deal with that. So now let's go to Luke chapter 21, uh, verse 25. And that we will read from the NLT. Okay, Luke 21, verse 25 to verse 28. All right, and this is what the Lord Jesus said. He says, and there will be strange signs in the, in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Okay, we read what the account in Genesis that said that the sun, the moon, and the stars are created for, for signs as well, as well as for giving light. But Jesus said here yeah, as well in Luke 21, verse 25, and there will be strange signs in the sun, in the moon, and stars. And yet on earth, the nations will be in turmoil. Perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. Next verse. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth. For the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Talking about the first heaven. Okay? Now, this is my understanding. The first heaven is where the demonic forces are. Where the territorial demons are. The second heaven is where all the angels are. And the third heaven is where God, our Father. This is where His throne is. So when we're talking about the, the powers in the heavens will be shaken, talking about the first heaven. But of course, the second heaven as well got involved here a bit, and we're going to look at that in Scripture just now to show you about what happened in the second heaven. But this is not talking about the first heaven where the demonic forces, demonic spirits, territorial demons, this is where they are. This is where they dwell. All right, next verse. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. All right, what he would be doing? He will be coming on a cloud, not a natural cloud that brings rain, but the cloud of people. All right, talking about people. Verse 28. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up for your salvation is near. Alright, your salvation is near. 
So this is, this, that's also another warning that came forth from the Lord to almost 2,000 years ago. So we can see beforehand, he told us what to look out for, and when these things start to happen, he says, just look up because your salvation is drawing near, your redemption is drawing near. In other words, God's going to redeem us from this earth. God is going to save us. That's the meaning of the word salvation. Okay? He's going to save us from the earth. All right? So, it says when we see these things happen. Now, let us go to the book of Revelation. We're going to deal with a few things there. From uh, chapter 12, from the New King James translation, verse 1. Now, now a great sign appeared in heaven. Oh, a woman clothed with the, what? A woman clothed with the sun. With the moon under her feet. And on her head a garland of twelve stars. Verse 2. Then, being with child, she cried out in a labor, in labor and in pain to give birth. Now listen to this. Listen to this. In, 20, in 2017, that sign appeared. Are you aware of that? That sign appeared in 2017. There were a whole lot of hype about it all over the world and there were some preachers that were preaching at the time that the end of the world has come. I've had people call me as well, pastors called me and I had to go for a meeting uh, you know to discuss this and uh, it so happened that they were so hyped up and I think most of their hype came from the internet or from YouTube. As you know, YouTube is not a very reliable source for you to study. You've got to be very careful who you listen to if you're watching things on YouTube. There's, a, there's more trash on it than good. You've got to be very selective. You've got to know the people. Anyone can come on YouTube and, and, and open a channel and, and preach or teach, and many of them have not gone to Bible college. Many of them are stealing other people's messages. You know, there's a lot of filth that's going on, and, and, and the whole idea is to make money. So the more views they get on, 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 on YouTube, they get paid for it. So they don't have a heart for you. They don't have a heart for nobody. They don't have a heart for Jesus. They, these are just troublemakers that are, that's out just to make money. So you've got to be very careful. So I think it's because of YouTube and other things on the Internet, these pastors have got all wound up. So I said to them, no. I said, you know, we are not at the time right now for the end of the world to happen. I'm not denying the sign. The people that deal with this, all these scientists and the people that look out into the sky, they realize this is the first time this happened. That the sun was in a certain position, the moon was in a certain position, and the stars were in a certain position. And uh, let's, go, let's go back to verse 1, please. So they, they, what they did was they, 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 they made an image. They put all, 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 the, all these uh, planets and these stars, you know, or whatever it was, all in a, in a proper, uh, in the way it appeared in the sky, and they drew around it to show that it, it had an image of a woman. All right? So now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. And when you look at that image, you'll see that the sun is above her head, and then she's lit up with the light of the sun, all right? And then the moon, and uh, under her feet, and on her head, a garland of 12 stars around her head. So all of that happened in, 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 in 2017. Now, I'm quite surprised that with so many signs that are already out, that people have not, are not concerned. People are just living life as they were living. You know, 
they're still setting, you know, long-term visions and goals and, and, and just busy with life. But when you, when you come down to start understanding what's going on around us, you must understand in 2017 this happened. This is now quite a while ago. You know, it's almost five years now that this sign appeared in the sky. All right. Then let's go back now to, let's go to verse 3. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. Next verse. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the ground, to the earth rather. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour a child as soon as it was born. Verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and a child was caught up to God and his throne. So what happened here was, this woman is none other than the church. And the church is given birth to a main child. And understand, the church is, uh, there's not many places that, it, uh, uh, that we can relate to it as being feminine. But there are more scriptures in the Bible that's talking about the church as being male. I don't want to get into that too much because I need to cover this today. All right, so she bore a male child. Then this dragon was ready, looking ready to devour this child. Okay. But what happened when she gave birth to this child? This child was what? Caught up to God and his throne. This scripture is talking, it's a direct reference to the church being raptured. So it's a direct reference to the church being raptured. That's exactly what it means. So this male child, which the devil wants to devour at this time. So in other words, the church is coming of age now. It's coming into its fullness. That is why we're calling it the rapture of the church. The church age is coming to an end. So in other words, it's coming to its fullness, it's coming of age. And this enemy, this dragon, this fiery red dragon, is out to devour this male child. All right? The body of Christ. But this body of Christ was caught up to God and his throne. Next verse. Then the woman fled into the wilderness. Were she as a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. All right? So, we can see now that 1,260 days is more or less three and a half years. So, we can see the first period of the tribulation. The tribulation is seven years, right? And the first three and a half years is a time of the tribulation. Not the great tribulation. Tribulation. In other words, it's not, it's not as bad. The second three and a half years is where it becomes the great tribulation because then, it, then, then the devil is really furious. Okay, we'll talk about that later on. But now, so this woman, the church on, that remains on the earth, Remember we spoke about those people? We spoke about those people that won't make it or people that are not interested in going up in the rapture. They're not really interested in going up when Jesus comes. They're not concerned. The people that are living how they want, you know, and they're having church, you know. But, you know, one thing about them is they've not denied Jesus Christ. Are you listening? 
So what does it make a person to be if a person is not ready to go up in the rapture, they don't believe in the rapture, they are not taught about the rapture? They're still Christians, you know, they're still children of God. Are you listening? And there's no way God is going to abandon them. God is not going to abandon them if they do not make it. But life is not going to be easy yet on earth. So the first three and a half years is where this woman is going to be. She's going to go in the wilderness and she's going to be protected there. She's going to be fed there. She's going to be and her offsprings. That means the church, the people, the Christians that remain here on the earth. They will, they're going to have a certain degree of God's protection upon them. Are you listening? But they're going to still be exposed to this earth and the struggles and the difficulties and the problems that are going here and the raging uh, of the enemy. Are you listening? So, so for the first three and a half years at 1,260 days, now this is my understanding and we don't have time to go and, and, and bring that out right now to you, but we will do that later on. This is my understanding. The first three and a half years is where the church will be protected. God will give her a certain degree of protection. But nevertheless, for her, for her being uninterested or not being zealous enough for God or to be caught up in this rapture, she's, go she's going to pay a price. How many of you know every step of disobedience, there's, there's a price to pay? Do you understand what I'm saying? So in other words, God is a, is a righteous God. He's a God of justice. He's a God of righteousness and he's a God of justice. God, he just does everything right and he just uh, does everything justfully. Now, you know, when you carry that through in our lives as parents, that is how we bring our children up. If, if you're a parent of righteousness and justice, that means you'll never cover up for the wrong that your children do or your child does. You know, you'll never cover up for the wrong. You'll know that it's wrong and that is a parent of righteousness and justice. God is a parent and, and you know what is a father, is a father of righteousness and a father of justice. And he gives everyone their time to use their own heart and mind, their will, and to make the right and proper decisions. I know some people wish God will just come and take over, you know. But he's not a taking over God. He wants you to be a participant with him in this. He wants you to do your part. He wants you to willingly be part of what he is doing on the earth. So these people that will be left behind will go through, through, through struggles. I mean, there's going to be a lot of struggles. They will be protected so that the devil cannot devour them, but they're going to still have to put up with a lot of things. Okay, they're going to have to put up with a lot of things uh, while this is happening. And God is going to protect them nevertheless. But also at the same time, you must understand, there are people that will be getting saved at that time. They too will be protected. So let's just move on. We just got some ground to cover here. Verse 7 now, please. <clears throat> and war broke out in heaven. Listen to this now. This is interesting. War broke out in heaven. All right? And my understanding, this is not the third heaven, now this is the second heaven. But the church wasn't in the second heaven, you see. Those raptured ones, they were taken to where? To the throne of God, which is in the third heaven. So those of us that got raptured, we are now in the third heaven. We got no dealing with this war that's going on in the second, or the first and the second heaven. I think it started in the second heaven and it came down into the first heaven, but just follow with me, yeah? The war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels <clears throat> fought with the dragon. The dragon is the devil, right? And the dragon and his angels fought. So there was war. Now, Michael is a dangerous angel. He's an archangel. All right? And so was Lucifer, mind you. So was Lucifer was an archangel. He's the devil right now. So he's quite dangerous. But Michael is a warring angel, you see. 
So there was war that broke out in heaven. Verse 8. But they did not prevail. Now, what was that war? You'll find out now in the scriptures. But they did not prevail. Who now? The devil and his angels did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Listen carefully. Up until that particular time, do you know the devil had freedom to go to heaven? He had freedom. Why? Because judgment was not passed on him as yet. We, you know he's guilty. I know he's guilty. God knows he's guilty. <laughs> God help him. Even he knows he's guilty. But because God did not pass judgment on him as yet, he had the freedom to go into the first heaven, to go into the second heaven, and even into the third heaven. How do you think he does what he does? All right? So what? What happened here was, there was, there was no, there was, nor was there a place found for them any longer. So what happened here? What happened there? Let's continue reading. Next verse. So the great dragon, the devil, was cast out. That serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. This is the first time this happened now. What? The devil was barred from heaven. Up until that time, he had the freedom to go. Up until the time he had the freedom to go, because his abode was in the first heaven, he used to go into the second heaven, he used to go into the third heaven. You understand? But now he was barred. There was no place for him now, because he lost the war. That make Michael, the archangel, fought with him and defeated him. And he got thrown out of heaven, completely. All right? Next verse, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, the devil, the dragon, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So what, the, the devil goes to heaven. What do you think he goes to heaven to do? It's here in scripture. He's to, he goes to try and remind God of your faults. You see right now the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. We are God's righteousness, right? When, the, when our daddy look at us, he look at us as being perfect. But you and I know, right? But he looks at us as perfect. <clears throat> Why? Because he loves us. And he looks at us covered with the blood of Jesus, washed clean. The devil hates that. And there are privileges that we have that the devil don't have. You know that? Do you know angels do not have the privileges we have? Because if angels sin, phew, they get thrown to hell immediately. You know why? Jesus Christ did not die for angels. His blood wasn't shed for angels, shed for human, the human race, for Adam's children. Are you listening? So we have become privileged more than him, even though he was an angel at one time. Now he's the devil. But the Bible says he's the accuser of the people of God. So he goes into the presence of God to do what? To accuse us before God day and night. So be, he, he got cast out now. He can't go and accuse us anymore. Why? Because we were already with God. You understand? We've been raptured. We're taken up before God into to his throne. So now salvation, complete salvation, full salvation of our spirit, of our soul, and even our bodies, because by that time, our bodies have changed from mortal into immortality. We've got glorified bodies, the same kind of body that Jesus Christ has. And we're now in the presence of God our Father. Isn't that wonderful? So now the devil can't come and accuse us. 
because of our, of our full salvation that we have received, the salvation of our bodies as well. But before that, he could accuse us. Why? Because we were still living in this flesh, in this immortal bodies, and we were still living with our weaknesses, and we were still living, battling through this and battling through that, and battling to walk righteous and serving God, and because of this torment that the, that the enemy was putting out to the people of God, and we had to fight the good fight of faith constantly. But now in heaven, in the presence of God, no more war. So no one can come and accuse us there now because we have received the full redemption of our bodies as well. So right now, who is he going to accuse now? Nobody. So he got cast down. He got cast out of the presence of God. Next verse, please. And they overcame him, who? The children of God. Overcame the devil. By what? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So by the blood of the Lamb, we, became, we, we got transformed. You understand? We got saved, we got redeemed. And the word of our testimony is that we, Jesus, we believe in you. That's our testimony. Because he is the God of our salvation. And they did not love their lives to, even to death. So in other words, this is the kind of people we are becoming. And by that time, this is the kind of people we'll be. That we will not compromise our faith and our standard and our love and worship to God. Next verse, please. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, <laughs> that, and you would dwell in them. The heavens, and you would dwell in them. That's us. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Wow, 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 wow. Now, now the scene is changing now. Now we're coming back to the earth now. In the heaven, rejoice. In the heavens, be full of joy. In heaven, you will know no, no tribulation, no turmoil, no struggles, no difficulties. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Oh, goodness me. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, great anger. Because he knows that he has a short time. He knows that his day is coming. Now he got thrown out of heaven. He's come down to the earth. And he is raging. That's when the tribulation begins. That's when the hard time starts. In a way that we wouldn't want to be here. I wouldn't want anyone that serves Jesus Christ to be here. But will they listen? They wouldn't listen. They've got their own warped theology. They've got their own warped life or mind or whatever. And they don't understand the scriptures. It's clear. It's very clear. So, finally the devil gets kicked out of heaven. All right? And then he gets thrown to the earth, and he comes with a, in a very, very different mood. You know, I mean, he's a angry devil all the time, but now he comes with great wrath, I mean, great anger, with a rage. <clears throat> all right? So for, 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 for the first three and a half years, he goes after the woman. Listen carefully, church. Listen to this. <clears throat> for the first three and a half years, most of the three and a half years, he goes after the woman that fled into the wilderness. So what, what does that say to you? He's going after the church that remained on the earth. Why? Because a big part of the church is already in heaven. And you guys, you all are serving the Jesus as well. I'm coming for you. And he gives them a very, 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 very difficult time. All right. I'm just going to share some things with you quickly just now. But let's go from verse 13 now. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted who? The woman who gave birth to the male child. All right? So what's happening here on the earth is that those that have remained here, those Christians that have remained here, 
And during that time, do you know during the first three and a half years, and even the second three and a half years of, of tribulation, people were still getting saved. I'll tell you who were getting saved. I think it's going to be the Jews first. I'll tell you why. Because they always rejected Jesus Christ as a Messiah up until now. Do you know Christians are being persecuted in Israel at the moment for believing in Jesus? Yes. But you know when the rapture takes place, when Jesus Christ comes back in the cloud and those that believe in him get raptured, the first people that's going to take note of that is the Jews. And they're going to tell, we've made a mistake. He was the Messiah. He is our Messiah. And what are they going to do now? Many of them are going to turn their hearts to him and they're going to start crying out to him. And then they're going to become part of the church that is here on the earth. I'm not saying that no Jews are going to come in the first rapture. No, there are. There are Jews that serve Jesus right now. And I think especially the younger generation. They are finding out for themselves that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And I heard, read this one account where this one young Jewish uh, boy, when he found out the truth from the scriptures as he was reading even the Gospels and reading the scriptures and, try, and got a revelation of what Paul, the apostle, was saying in his epistles, and he said to the older people, apparently, your guys have been lying to us for generations. Because Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ is our Messiah. So I think there are many more young ones like that that are finding out the truth for themselves. Thank God for them. And I think in that rapture, the first rapture, they'll be part of it because they serve him. But after the church has been taken away from here, the Jews are going to be the first ones to open their eyes to see. But then there's going to be a lot of other people from different nations as well. You know, from different nations of the world. You know, right now, the Arab nations, those so-called Islamic nations, you know, uh, I'm doing some research now on certain nations of the earth. And I, can, I realize that their hearts are so soft toward Jesus right now. And he is showing himself to them. They're turning their hearts to him and he's giving them visions and all, and all kinds of things. And because, because they're turning their hearts to him and they're crying out to him. Jesus, if you're real, if you're what this preacher say you are, show yourself to me. And he's showing himself to them. And there are many, many, many of them that are getting saved right now. But they are getting persecuted in their country. You understand? A country like Iraq, as you know how anti-Christ the government is. The amount of people that are getting saved. Oh, they have such a passion. I, say, I tell you what, I was listening to this one account of these people. Man, shoo. The church in the other parts of the world is weak compared to them. Their passion for the Lord. They're, they're not scared, they're not afraid of, for their lives. The government is telling them, don't preach in the name of Jesus. They're preaching in the name of Jesus. So they're taking them and putting them in the prison, and they're preaching in the prison too. How can you stop them? They're not scared because they're not afraid. Take us and kill us. But we'll preach as long as we have breath in us. Then they keep food away from them. They don't feed them. But they're still preaching. They're still in the prison, out of the prison, everywhere, anywhere. They're distributing Bibles. They get caught, get thrown in prison. They're preaching in the prison again. So there were two women that were thrown in the prison. And while they were there, they were terribly, terribly punished. Very badly. And inside of the prison... You know, they, they put them in a section where they were political prisoners, you understand? This is in Iraq now. They, uh, um, Iraq or Iran, I think it's in Iran, I'm not sure, but one of, the, one of these two countries. Yeah, so what happened was they, they put them in this prison and they put them in the section where they were political prisoners. So those political prisoners are asking these two women, what are you all doing here? I mean, y'all are not politicians. They say, no, we're not. So what y'all are in here for? So what these two women did now, I said, you really want to know what we're here for? They say, yes. Said, so this is why we are here. So they're sharing with these prisoners about Jesus. And they're getting saved. Now the prison guards and the officials in the prison, you know, they can't understand what's happening. So they call these women out 
to punish them. And they asked them, tell us, why are you talking about uh, Jesus? You are in this prison because you were preaching about him. Now you're in this prison and you're still preaching about him. They say, no, it's not our fault. It's your fault. So the guards asking them, well, why it's our fault? He says, because you put us there. And those people are asking us what we're doing there. So all we are doing is we're telling them what we're doing there. Why you all put us there. That's all we're doing. And they're getting saved. It's your fault. So what can you do with these people? So you think you're strong as a Christian? Go and meet these people. And I'm telling you something. Nothing matters to them. Even food don't matter to them. Clothing don't matter. Nothing matters. Only Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They're so in love with him. I'm telling you, put, some, put church folks to shame. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. All right, let's read next verse, please. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now to me, my understanding of that, I know it's tongue twisting. My understanding is the first three and a half years of the persecution. All right, next verse. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Verse 16. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed, swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Verse 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offsprings. Do you understand that? Who's the offsprings now on earth? The ones that never made it to in the rapture and the ones that were getting saved. Okay, he made to go in to make war with her and with their offsprings. Who keep the commands of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that's the scenario of the first three and a half years of what's going to happen here on the earth. I'm not sure whether you are doing your own research and your own studies regarding this matter. There is a lot of information out there. Okay, please snap out of your own world. Get into the real world. Look around you. Do your research. Do your study. Do you know what's happening in the world right now, even as we speak? There are floods in most parts of the world. Are you aware of that? There's so much of uh, uh, rain in Norway. There's a dam that burst. There is flooding in China like you can't believe it. Thousands of people have died and have gone missing. And the water, they say that water will take over a month to recede, to go back. Rivers, I think about, they said about 30 rivers broke the banks, couldn't contain the water. Entire villages are sunken. Entire cities are underwater. The capital city of Beijing, doesn't matter how the government is trying to save that city, but that city is damaged badly. And in Japan, and the funny thing about the, the, the storm in China, is that when this rain started, and it just, they got, I think, uh, one month's rain in one day. So what, what I'm saying is that if it rained every day for, for one month, they got all that rain in one day. So that was serious, right? So there was a tornado came with this storm of rain, swept over this country, most of the country, not just one part. You know, like here, we said, okay, no, there's a heavy rain in Johannesburg, they're experiencing flood. There's a heavy rain in Cape Town, they're experiencing No, here, there's a heavy rain in China. I mean, China is a big country. I don't know how many times bigger than this country. So that storm touched most parts of that country. Now, the, the funny thing about it, the people that deal with the weather patterns, they say that this is the funny thing about it, they were tracking the storm while it was enraged over China, and it went out to the ocean 
and he did a U-turn, and it came back. They said that never, ever happened in history. Once a storm goes out into the sea, it, 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 you know, it, 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 it loses its momentum, it downsizes itself, and it moves on to the next country that's nearby. But this thing went into the sea and came back stronger than when it went. It did a U-turn. The same thing is, has happened in, in Japan. In, in, in the West at the moment, it's summer for them. It's summer there right now. But they have got rain and cold in summer. I have seen with my own eyes hailstones size of a tennis ball falling and smashing cars and windows and Germany is, I mean in the street of Germany there's a hill, hill on the street like one meter high. You can't drive. So they were using machines and spades to remove the hail. In most parts uh, of Europe and, uh, and even uh, uh, UK as well and in America Rain, wind, and storm like you cannot believe it. And then in Hawaii, one of the islands of Hawaii, Maui, I think, right now there's about 50 people that have died in a raging fire. Uncontrollable fire. They cannot bring that fire under control. They actually had to evacuate, evacuate the people from, that, from the island and take them somewhere else. Now, I don't know. Some of you are busy, but I don't know what you're doing because out there, there's so much of signs of what's going on. And Jesus said, when you see these things happening, look up for your salvation is drawing near. There's enough for you to know right now that we are on track for the rapture to take place. Are you listening? Now, there's a lot of other things happening now. Uh, in India as well, there was, a te there was a terrible, terrible storm in India. Rainstorm, water, and uh, you know, the, 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 the scripture was talking about the raging sea, the tides. They, they cannot read it. Those so-called experts that used to read the weather patterns and read the tides, it's out of control right now. They, it's out of control. They don't know what's going on, how this is coming, why is it happening in this way. But I guess if they take their Bible and sit down and read their Bible, they'll find out the Lord of all glory, the creator of all things. He said, before you come and take his church, these things are going to happen. They'll find it out. It's there in scripture already. They don't have to go and sit and scratch their head. You understand? They just take their Bible and sit down. They'll find out exactly what he said. And it, and it is happening exactly how he said it. And the other thing that is happening right now that you need to know is that the biggest exporter, I think, of rice and wheat is India throughout the world. And because there was a shortage, they banned rice, rice export. Finally, right now, they, they, they said, okay, you know what, they're going to lift the ban a little bit and they're going to give rice out to different nations, sell rice to them from the... Uh, stock from the overstock from the reserves now if you don't take that as a sign I don't know what you're going to take as a sign one of the things that is going to happen according to the book of Revelation as well is there's going to be a terrible shortage of food there's going to be a big shortage of food you know one of the things that I would think that children of God will learn in this time how to trust God for a slice of bread. Some people's lives are too intact. I mean, they don't need God. They God all on their own. They got their job, you know, they earn their money, they pay their bills, they buy their food. They don't need God. Now, what are you going to do when there is no food and you've got a whole lot of money? Huh? Who are you going to turn to then? Who is going to be your provider then? Who's going to supply your daily bread then? 
Who are you going to cry out to? Who are you going to cry out to? Government can't do nothing. They can do nothing now. And that time you think they'll be able to do something? I don't think so. So, if you don't try to train yourself right now, from now, how to become a God depender, it might be a little bit too late when you start that time, when it's happening. You got to start now. You got to make God your ultimate, ultimate source. If you don't know how, get down to some studying, get down to some learning, listen to those messages that is posted, you know, every Wednesday, because that's, that's helping, that's going to help you a, in a big way. I'm not done with that. And there's so much more to cover in that, in that message in, on living faith. I hope you're listening to that. Because I'm going to cover a lot of stuff there. Coming back to this point, to ask this question, where does everything come from? And then we truthfully answer that question, everything comes from God. The church is coming to that place right now. But listen, over the body of Christ, there is a canopy of protection which the Father has placed upon us. But you see, church, we can choose. We have a choice. We can choose to struggle with the rest of the world or we can choose to live in God's provision. It's your choice. You see, it's, it's, it's your choice. It's your decision. And if you say, no, I'm going to live from God's provision, then God becomes your source 100%. Now, I, I'll tell you what, the storm might not affect you in other parts of the world. Do you know the, the Bible talks about volcano, volcanoes erupting? Right now, there's a major, major attention drawn to a certain part of Israel. They say underneath that, uh, that fault line, there are about 17 volcanoes. Underneath that volcanoes, there are rivers and seabeds. So when, when the Lord spoke about fire, when he spoke about blood, when he spoke about things, there are scriptures in the Bible we don't have time to go into now, but in, in Jesus Christ mentioned about that. You understand? And, and I believe he was talking about that 17 volcanoes erupting and bursting the ground open and that waters, those seas of waters in the earth, is going to gush forward. Do you know during the time of Noah, the same thing happened? It did not just rain. The earth opened up and all the water from inside of the earth, all rose as well, all the spring waters and everything flooded the earth from underneath and from the top. So that's what's going to happen again. And we are coming to that time. We're coming to that time. So right now, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that's happening right now, even as we are here sitting here and listening to this message. Things are happening on the earth. We've got to take that blinkers off. We've got to go and sit down with the scriptures. We've got to go do our research. We've got to listen attentively. Now listen, you might not hear everything in this message one go. You've got to have to go put it on again and listen to the message again. Listen to what you can pick up from here. Let us go to the book of Jude. We want to read the book of Jude. All right, before we go. This is, this is an encouragement for you today. The book of Jude from the NLT, right? You can just follow with me and then read with me. This letter is from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. Who is James and who is Jude? They were half-brothers of Jesus Christ. See, he never mentions it here. What does he say? He says, I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. But he was Mary's son, Mary and Joseph's son. Okay, same with James as well. All right. I am writing to all who have been called by God, the Father, who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. Next verse. May God give you more and more mercy, peace and love. Let's just keep going. Verse 3. Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share. But now I find that I must write about something else. Urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all to his holy people. Now, let me just stop right there. Defend the faith. 
That means there's no time for you to sleep or to go and sing some lullabies. You understand? It's time for you to stand up and stand your ground and fight the good fight of faith. You understand? It's time for you to believe now. And the Bible, the scriptures, is not magic words, you know. We don't speak the magic words and see the thing happening. No, no. We have to believe the word. We have to believe the word. And yes, we speak the word. But we believe the word for it to happen in our lives. Let's move on. Next verse. Verse 4. I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into the churches, saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The co uh, condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. That's happening in the church right now. All right, let's move on, verse 5. So I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt, but later he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. Talking about those people that perished in the wilderness. He, he rescued them from Egypt, but they wanted to go back to Egypt. I mean, phew, talk about dummies, right? Verse 6. And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits, uh, did not stay, Within the limits of authority, God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely, changed in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. So what is he saying? He says, even the angels don't get away from misusing their authority. They get thrown into jail or in prison or to hell immediately. And they are held there for the final day of judgment. Verse 7. And don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, which were filled with immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by what? By fire and serve as a warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. I believe when those volcanoes erupt, there's going to be that kind of fire that's going to flow like water. Verse 8. In the same way, these people who claim authority from their dreams live immoral lives. How are you like that? People claim authority from their dreams. I call it false authority. All right? People who claim authority from their dreams live immoral lives, defy authority, and scoff at supernatural beings. Okay, you think that this is not happening in the church right now? You'll be in for a surprise when you find that out. Verse 9. But even Michael, who now? The archangel. Michael, one of the mightiest of the angels, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. This took place when Michael was arguing with the devil about Moses' body. All right, the angels came to fetch Moses' body, and the devil was arguing with him. But look at how, what the scripture says, even Michael did not blaspheme. All he said to this devil, to Lucifer, the Lord rebukes you. Okay? Next verse. Talk about control. But these people scoff at things they do not understand. People scoffing at us right now that believe in the rapture. They don't understand it. All right? Like unthinking animals. Goodness me. That's not my words, right? I didn't read the, write the Bible, the NLT. That's a scripture. Like unthinking animals. <laughs> they do whatever the in instincts tell them. And so they bring about their own destruction. Verse 11. What sorrow awaits them? For they follow in the footsteps of Cain who killed his brother. Like Balaam, they deceive people for money. And like Korah, they perish in their rebellion. Korah was the one who rebelled against Moses. Next verse. When these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. <laughs> they are like shameless shepherds who care only for themselves. They are like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. <laughs> they are like trees in autumn that are doubly dead. 
for they bear no fruit and have been pulled up by the roots. Verse 13. This man's got away with words, right? They are like wild waves of the sea, churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. They are like wandering stars, doomed forever to blackest darkness. Verse 14. Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones. Verse 15. To execute judgment on the people of this world. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Their day is coming. Verse 16. These people are grumblers and complainers, living only to satisfy their desires. They brag loudly about themselves and they flatter others to get what they want. Verse 17. But you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ said. Verse 18. They told you that in the last times there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. Verse 19. These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. Hmm. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. Do you know many of them are in a ministry? They have a ministry, they say. And they're using the natural human instincts. And they are misleading God's people. They're not being led by the Holy Spirit to do what they're doing. They say they're called of God and they're not. Verse, nine, verse 20. But you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. And, and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourselves safe in God's love. Verse 22. And you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. All right? So in other words, weak people, you've got to go show mercy to them. Don't pass judgment if you're not helping them. You've got no rights to pass judgment on anybody if you didn't do your part to help that person. The church is too good when it comes to that. Ah, you know that person. Oh, that, this and that. But what have you done for that person? Have you failed with that person that qualifies you to talk now? Or have you did nothing for that person? It's a shame, right? And you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Verse 23. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to, mercy to still others. But do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. So in other words, don't become like them. Help them. They're in the ditch. You don't fall in that same ditch. Verse 24. Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. This is what the devil hates. You understand? In the rapture, that's what's going to happen. He hates that. Verse 24, 5. All glory to him who alone is God, our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. Amen. That is glorious. Now if you've got time, if you've got time, you can... You can uh, read that at home, the book of Jude. Take your time, sit down and read it. It's a very nice book. You can read it from different translations. Jude is talking just like how Peter spoke, just like how James spoke. And they're focusing. And what did he say? He says, do not forget what the apostles of the Lord said. Don't forget what they said. Remember what they said. But you and I today, we are in right standing with God because of His love for us.